you know, I'm not sure when I'm going to upload this because I just uploaded a podcast technically, but I'm feeling up to talking about how this week has been for me in Pokemon Go. So I'm going to just do it. I mean, like, this may be the most outdated podcast I ever released because it may not get up until a week after I record it. Or I may end up having two podcasts in one week. I have not actually decided what to do with it yet. <laughs> but for those of you who are new here, this is the Fireside Chat. With a lot of tentative things and a lot of tentative places. Because podcasting has always been a size thing. And trying to find out where it squeezed into my lifestyle has always been way more of a job than I thought it would be. <laughs> I think what works best for me is to just like go through this reference app that has the, all events going on in the game currently and just go through one by one go on tangents as needed and go from there so the first thing that comes to my mind is the whole Earth Day event that started up yesterday, Saturday during the same time of Community Day so from what I understand reading the post you go do a cleanup anytime between now Till April 29th. Actually, let's just say April 28th because the Go Ranger app here is saying the 29th at 2 a.m. You'll probably want to like leave some time for leniency in there in case things don't get registered right away. Basically, go look up Niantic's blog post about this. Try to find cleanup in your area. And just see what times they're doing their cleanups in. Worst case scenario, I believe there's a way you can go and take a snapshot of your cleanup and then tweet it to Niantic. I will give a quick skim just for you all and see if it goes over those details here. Here we go. If your business is taking place on your own or with a small group, tag at Niantic Labs using hashtag augmenting reality to tell us about your cleanup and we'll count your efforts towards your presentation. So it's a lot more lenient than last year. If you don't recall, last year they also had a Pokemon Go Ingress Niantic in general cleanup event. But for that to count, you had to actually take part in a quote-unquote sponsored research or sponsored cleanup. And from what I hear, they were pretty unlenient with what qualifies as a cleanup, but they seem to be loosening up on that a lot more this year. And you may be wondering, Jackie K, why the heck would I want to take part in a cleanup? Well, for you, sir, who aren't motivated purely based on civil needs to the planet and society, I guess I could go over some things that actually motivate you within the game. There are rewards set up for both people who play Pokemon Go and for those who play Ingress. The first milestone will be reached if we have 2,000 players attending this cleanup. And in Pokemon Go, this will result in ground types appearing more frequently. In Ingress, excuse me because I am very unfamiliar with the Ingress terminology, Increased probability, blah, 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 blah. increased probability of getting heat sinks, multi hacks, shields of all kinds, and power cubes of all kinds, including, oh man, I'm gonna butcher this bad, Lawson. If we get 5,000 people involved in this event, Pokemon Go players will get to see more ground type Pokemon in the wild. And you have a chance of a shiny Diglett. AKA Shiny Diglett will be introduced into the shiny pool. Ingress players will have everything from before on top of times two AP linking. If we have 7,000 players involved in the event, all the rewards for Pokemon Go from before will be in place on top of the fa fact that Groudon will be introduced into the raid pool. And you'll have times to Stardust when you catch stuff and times to Candy when you catch Pokemon. Ingress 
on top of everything you got before, you'll also get times 2 AP fielding. And from the details I read on the site, this will take place at the end of cleanup. The rewards will take place at the end of cleanup for 48 hours. So I'm assuming like April 30th to maybe May 1st or something. We'll have all these incentives like more ground type Pokemon, Shiny Diglett, ground on raids, and the extra stuff for catching. Now yours really has a quite a bit of insight on this. At least looking forward to the events and rewards that come out. I am not getting a shiny ground on, so if we do reach that final milestone, I'll definitely take advantage of that opportunity if at all possible. And I'm never going to complain about a new shiny being introduced into the game either. But if we don't Niantic, they're probably lowballing these incentives and we'll probably reach it in no time. Still, it's a good idea to just like get involved for the good of it all. Like, there's always good to come out of cleaning the plan and all that. Now, I haven't set up anything yet, and because of the way I act as a person, I probably won't take part in a group cleanup. But in the back of my mind, if I can put the time aside, I think I am going to just like go to the beach at a local park and just check the beach for any trash to pick up. Maybe I'll tweet it, maybe I'll not. I'm not really too worried about doing it for the milestone incentives and that. My biggest peak with this, the interest in this is just that it sounds like it's always a good idea when we can get games like Pokemon Go to actually do good to our society and benefit the entire area we play and not just for the people who play in them, if you know what I'm saying. I'm kind of curious to see the final numbers when they come in. I get the feeling that they'll be way over 7,000, especially considering that this is from two different communities, the Ingress and Pokemon Go communities, they're all they're both being grouped together, and it's worldwide. I think we'll reach 7,000 no problem, but it'll be interesting to see just high, how high we as a community can get. And Giratina raids are still going on as strong as ever. If you haven't gotten in already, I highly encourage you to try to find some to do, because the origin form Giratina is one of the better things we've seen now in raids in a good while. Top ghost type Pokemon in the game. Yeah, with that new move pool that they have for the origin form, it even outperforms Gengar and Shadow Ball Mewtwo, which were the previous two contenders of the field. And you may be thinking that being the best ghost type is a bit of a niche. But keep in mind there are a lot of psychic legendary and mythical Pokemon in Pokemon Go. So having a real good ghost type attacker is always useful in your back pocket. Because you'll never know when Mewtwo will come back for one. And even if not, there's plenty of other legendary Pokemon that rely heavily on the psychic type. That a good ghost type would be useful to have to use against those Pokemon. Well, I got it pulled up, I'll just throw some raid advice on Giratina Origin form because I haven't really talked about raiding too often yet. As for what you want to bring, um, I would say, like, assuming all the players that are at least level 30, I would at least bring five people. Though you definitely can get away with four or three. Leads to a funny story. Early on when Giratina raids were going on, one of the raids I did, I was, there was no one there. I just walked up to myself waiting for people to jump in. Two people jumped in, so we were going in with a raid of three. Bringing the best stuff I could at level 40, we just barely took down this origin form Giratina with three people. It's quite an exciting accomplishment, but... It does make me want to emphasize that while it is possible and the fact that I was able to do it means that it's probably easy for hardcore players with Pokemon even beyond what I have to do with three people. 
but it's definitely safer to have closer to five. As for what to bring, here's the top six generalists that are listed on PokeBattler.com. It's worth emphasizing if you don't have the counters that I'm about to list, you may want to make sure you bring more than five people. While it's certainly possible as long as you have Pokemon that is weak against, the less ideal counters you have, the more people it'll take to take it down. So listed here, we have Rayquaza, Palkia, Salamence, and with that new community they moved that Salamence got, very good to have a Salamence, maybe even more valuable than Palkia. This guy here might be a little bit outdated, can't quite tell. After those three though, you want to have Dragonite, Gengar, but keep in mind that it'll be a glass cannon, so just be prepared for it to die real fast. And Dialga, which I personally find as a good like anchor, like if you don't want to wipe out, and you know you have enough people to beat the raid, maybe stick a Diego at the end of your team, just in case. And those are the top six I would recommend bringing. After that we have Latias with double dragon moves, Mewtwo with Shadow Ball, Mammal Swine with double ice of course, Weavile, Tranitar, and Latias. Like I said before, as long as you have Ghost, Ice, and Dark types, and Dragon I believe, and technically Fairy, but like I would say Fairy is a last resort, you can take it down, but if you don't have the counters I just listed out, you may want to bring one or two extra people just to assure that you can do the raid just fine. One other thing I think is worth keeping in mind. Giratina will be weather boosted if the game considers it foggy or windy outside. So while that is good, because you'll be able to catch it at a higher level, keep in mind you'll want to make sure you have your team even more prepared than other because it will be stronger and take more effort to take down. So like if you think you can normally do a Giratina raid with four people, you may want to bring a fifth just in case. Next up on the list of current events going on, we still have the March and April Field Research Day. Still the same breakthroughs as before. I feel like I've already given more of a spiel than I ever could imagine with it. So I'll just leave it off there. And I'm going to just jump ahead a little bit to upcoming events because I know by the time I get this out, this event will be live. It's the Egg Extravaganza. It is April, Easter is coming up, and if you've been following Pokemon Go for the past couple of years, this event was inevitable. Like before, there's all sorts of bonuses revolving around hatching eggs. Like we're going to be getting more... When you spin your stop to get eggs, they'll be focused more around the 2 kilometer eggs. But these will not be your ordinary 2 kilometer eggs. There will be different Pokemon in these, so now let me see if it lists them all. It does not, but I will, I don't have a handy exactly list of Pokemon that are available, but I'll just read off what's on the site. Pokemon like Pichu, Smoochum, and Magby will be available in the 2 kilometer eggs. So. It seems like we're going to have a baby Pokemon theme revolving around it. Because I think it matches up with some of the other Pokemon I've heard. I just don't want to read them off unless I have it like handy in front of me. In addition, there'll be times to candy when you hatch a Pokemon. Egg incubators burn twice as quickly. I know that's a horrible way to read that the incubators are twice as effective. But I mean, it's true. Let's be real here. You can view it either way depending on if you see the glass half full or half empty. Because it's always good because you have, at the very worst, you have that free incubator. And the faster you can hatch a Pokemon out of that, the quicker you can use your free incubator for the next one. Anyways, Lucky Eggs 
are twice as effective if you're still grinding for experience. And there's supposed to be field research revolving around these eggs as well. Kinda wish I was waiting to record this when we actually have the field research revealed, because it'll be interesting to see how those are. But I'm it's it's convenient for me to record now, so I want to make sure I didn't miss out on it. Last but certainly not least, there's a new shiny that's going to be in play with it. Take some guesses. This is an Easter theme event. What's the first Pokemon that comes to mind that we don't have a shiny for that would fit this event? That guess is probably correct. But just so we're on the same page, Shiny Binary is going to be introduced in the game and... It's cute. Like, it's got that little pink... It's got like a cute little pink flare. Literally perfect for Easter. Like, I can imagine a Shiny Binary at Macy's shopping mall during this time of year or something like that. Speaking of events that are going to be happening before I can even get this up, Latios Raid Week is here. If you've seen Latios Raid Week, you know what to expect. A legendary Pokemon that we've had in the past that no one wants for competitive scenes. We'll be returning and interrupting the current raid boss. But not completely. Just to the point where it'll annoy both the people that want the new legendary Pokemon that's available for only that week. And the people who want the raid boss that's available for that month. But don't fear, there's a sparkling new form that's going to be introduced with it. That you'll never catch. Wow. Gotta get a self check, cause that was pretty salty, I gotta admit. Maybe lay off the Mountain Dew jacket, K. That came out a little too harsh. And I know I was trying to be funny, but it just seemed mean. <laughs> Apologies for any tiredness and salty and bitterness that I may express. Even though I feel like commentating on that today. I walked in the park in the rain. And my body is still cold from it. Which is not good news of itself, but everything else with me is fine. So I decided to just say screw it. I'm gonna go and talk them through it. But if I have a weird mood today, that would be why. Seriously though, I am actually interested in Latios Raid Week. I did joke about it, but it does tie into my only complaint. I really wish they would have waited when we didn't have a Raid Boss in rotation as good as Giratina Origin form. I forget what raid boss we had last, but I think even that would have been a better time to release this than this particular month of the Giratinas. But hey, it's here, I can't complain. And I know I just said that I had a complaint, but when you think more about it, it's more of a critique. It has been so long since we had the Latias raid week. So I know, especially with the new shiny form, people were looking forward to the Latios raid week. I gotta double check that shiny. For some reason, I'm under the impression that it's not as exciting as Latios. But I could be getting it mixed up with their mega. What their shiny looks like when they go into their mega form. Because I recall when the Gen 4 games first came out and mega... Or the Gen... The Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire games... And the Mega Latios and Mega Latias were first introduced. I remember being disappointed that their shiny forms were pretty much exactly the same. So that's probably what I'm getting confused with. To our good friend, Google. Hashtag not sponsored. Okay, so a refresher for everyone, including yours truly. Shiny Latias was like a yellow-orange color. I gotta double check. Yeah, a pretty cool yellow-orange color. Lottie else is okay too. It's green, it's kinda like that neon green that just barely tortures your eyes, but not quite to the level of being bad. So I I mean like I have still rated good, but it's like the green is borderline on the borderline between good and eye hurting. 
in my personal opinion, at least. It's yeah, it's the freaking mega form that I'm thinking of. Let's pull up our good friend Google here and Google shiny Latias and Latios. Disclaimer: I'm actually using Bing because I'm the I actually enjoy Microsoft Edge. And I'm too lazy to go to Google every single time because I do prefer Google as an engine, but too lazy to actually manually go to Google.com every time I want to at just do a search. Let me, yeah, it's looking like that they're just both generic purple or generic green guys I can't even tell after doing a Google search <laughs> they still look exactly the same to me um that is I think one is actually purple and the other is green there's this one screenshot showing two things that are they look exactly the same, but they're different colors, so I assume one is Latios and one is Latias. But I can't for the life of me figure out which one is which. Maybe that's where my disappointment with the Mega Forms are. Not with the colors that shiny, but just the fact that how s that you can't even tell the two Megas apart, even though they're different Pokemon. I don't know, there's just something about normal Latios and Latias I can at least tell apart. Beyond their colors. If you thought it's bad how similar Latios and Latias look, just wait until Mega Evolutions introduce the game. That's the point I'm getting at. <laughs> now off that tangent train. We're not worried about the future right now, we're just thinking about the present. <laughs> and man, I could think of some bad. Uh, not bad as in the new bad. Bad as in like pessimistic. So yeah, from April 15th when these sorts of events usually start to Monday, April 22nd on the time that these events usually end, Latios will be returning to raids. It'll be mixed in with Origin Form Giratina if Latias Day is anything to go by. And Shiny Latios will be available for the first time. Now, for those of you who never liked Shiny Hunt for Raiding, this is what you do. You do the raid, you pray. And if you have want to keep your sanity, you just assume you're not going to get it. And say, just so you're pleasantly surprised when you do. Now, if you're excited for Latios and Latias, good for you. I'm technically am too, just... Not as excited as I am for Origin Form Giratina. But hey, it's only for a week. I'll probably, like, do the thing I usually do when there's a week-long raid and Friday night go to the college that I normally raid at where I can get raids real easily without being in a group chat. Do any dark eggs that pop up and see what happens. I definitely won't turn my nose to a shiny Latias, even if I definitely would have preferred a shiny Latias, because coloring, preference and coloring and all that. Because I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Me explain some things, hopefully won't make me sound completely petty. But I have not gotten a shiny legendary Pokemon. Since what was the last legendary per bird in those rainy days? I think it was Moltres. But whichever of the two, I have not gotten a shiny legendary since. And I only say that because I know if it wasn't for the format of the raid days where you pretty much could get several dozen raids within the three hours that it was available and if you had a group planned out, which I did, you are pretty much guaranteed a shiny. So I have yet to actually feel like I fairly, quote unquote, got a shiny legendary. 
even with the shiny legendaries that have been available through free research, even with the times that legendary Pokemon have returned to raids that have that shiny potential, nothing no legendary Pokemon I've raided for has really sparkled since those raid days. Now I feel my momentum slipping away from me so I may just breeze through a lot of these quicker. There's a lot of Pokemon Go snapshot events coming up. So you can look forward to that. Essentially, you can see the details on Pokemon Go's blog page, but I'll just go over the basics. They're basically having a major contest revolving around AR photos. I think there's like three different photo tasks. One where you take a photo of your buddy Pokemon. Specifically, you want to take a snapshot that like shows your bond between you and your Pokemon. So like the sample they show is like some lady having a picnic with her Slack King. Second one is a habitat challenge where you want to like take a picture of a Pokemon in its natural environment. Like, this one sample has a butterfree in a flower field. The third is the Go Create Challenge, where there are no limits and you can do pretty much anything you want. Whether it be making a meme, making just a picture with a funny joke, or just a cool picture in general. Now these have different date ranges. The Buddy one starts on April 15th. And you have to get your entry in by April 24th. Post your pop top three entries on Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag Go Snapchat and hashtag Buddy Challenge. The Habitat Challenge goes from April 29th to May 8th. And post your top three with the Go Snapchat hashtag and the hashtag Habitat Challenge. And Go Create goes from May 13th to May 22nd. Hashtags you use are Go Snapshot and Go Create Challenge. And I thought that there was prizes listed for these. So where was that? Oh, here it is. The grand prize winner and two runner-ups for each challenge. I don't know. Okay, here we go. The runner-up will win a special Pokestop feature with their winning photos that will remain for no less than three months. The grand prize winner for each challenge will receive a special Pokestop and be taken directly to a Pokemon Go Fest of their choice. Which I guess leads to a good segue into Pokemon Go Fest. They've, long story short, they released the Pokemon Go Fest for this year. And yes, I did say Go Fest. They have one over in Chicago, where Pokemon Go Fest usually takes place. But they also have two Go Fests for other regions of the world. One for Dortmund. I forget where that is, but I think that's in like the Europe area. And an unreleased location that's going to be somewhere in East Asia. And in addition, when they made that announcement, they released to us the next the dates for the next few community days. May's community day will be on the 19th, which is a Sunday. June 8th, which is a Saturday. July 21st, which is a Sunday. And August 3rd, which is a Saturday. Now, I am just trying to breeze through things as quickly as possible because I feel my steam going off. <laughs> but I will say, I do appreciate them being flexible with it being Saturday or Sunday and not exclusively Saturday. As I've mentioned in the past podcast, it will probably be a little bit less convenient on me on the Sundays, but... At the end of the day, that'll be well worth it to allow more people the opportunity to play on the communities. As I mentioned, I know people who can't play on Saturdays at all. So I'm more than happy to like 
sacrifice the fact that I'll be having a late night when I go to work the following day. Or more likely have to leave community day early to avoid having a super late night on a Sunday. In order for friends and fellow associates who can only play on Sundays to have the opportunity to play on Sundays. That alone makes me real excited about this. And I mean, I guess I could go into the speculation with Community Day and all that, but we really don't know too much about it. They haven't released tickets yet, there's rumors flying around about how they're even going to distribute the tickets. I could jump on the speculation train with everyone else, but I am trying to keep this a bit shorter. But I feel like everyone and their grandmother has spewed on every single major point of speculation we can currently make at this time. There's a bunch of Pokemon on the picture. One thing that is of notice is there's a Pokemon from Gen 4 that has yet to be released in the promotional photo. And if you squint real closely at the tree, you can find a region exclusive Pokemon. So that's probably going to be the regional exclusive that comes up there. Hippolytus is the Gen 4 Pokemon. And Pachirisu is the little tiny thing in the tree. Because you know it's a squirrel. I feel like I'm spelling it out. But, I mean, some Pokemon people who haven't played Pokemon outside of Go may not be as familiar with it. And you know, I will say... Man, I really wish I was going to go fest. I, if only just for the Pachirisu. But then I have to remind myself, is it really worth taking a plane ticket, flying to Chicago just for a bunch of pixels that look like a white squirrel? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I'm more open to going to Gold Fest than I was in previous years. At first I thought it would have been impossible because I would have used up all my off time before then, but I'm realizing that I had more off time than I thought, so I'm not seeing anything right now, but it's a thought that's in the back of my mind, and it really helped if I knew that more people, if I knew more people that were gonna be there, but almost... I know there's already going to be people who aren't going to be there this year, so I almost am thinking it'd be better to wait until next year and just assume that because I'm going up to him 10 in July for Con Bravo, that someone, someone at a convention in Canada will have the regional exclusive that's in Canada. Granted, I think it's still a couple hours away like a couple hours north from where I'm going in Canada, where Pachirisu starts popping up. But you know, if I'm traveling two hours to a convention from the south, you would think that people would be traveling at least two hours from the north, if not more. That's my thinking going in. Yeah, you know, I don't think I've ever gone on record on the podcast saying this, but... The two regionals that I want most that I don't have yet are Pachirisu and Chadot. Chadot is just one of those Gen 4 Pokemon that's my favorite whenever I think of it. Like, I have some good memories with Chadot, so if I ever get the opportunity to get one, I'm going to jump on it. And Pachirisu, I guess I've just grown attached to ever since that story of how it won Worlds. Back in, oh, was it already 2014? That just feels like so long ago. So I want to say it was 2017. But it was a pretty famous world. So like I don't even normally pay attention to the world's tournament. And I've heard of this fable Pachiritsu. But yeah, those are two things that I want to get. And I guess I can also mention because I haven't had a chance to bring it up elsewhere. I'm so close to completing the Pokedex, guys. Like, I've caught every single Gem 4 that's available in my area. Done all the evolutions associated with them. Except for Bonsly. 
I can get fossil Pokemon that are stupid rare. I can get the baby Pokemon that's supposed to be rare. Happiny. In fact, I can get five Happinis from those stupid seven clowner eggs, but I can't seem to get a bond slide for some reason. <laughs> so that's what's holding me back. I haven't even found anyone yet. Local to me, I should say. I definitely know of people who have one. Because if I knew of anyone that had a spirit bond slide, I already trade for it and have it in the decks. But yeah, between going up to Universal Studios in Florida during February and going to PAX East in March, I pretty much caught and evolved every single Pokemon currently available in Pokemon Go minus a few regionals. Like after Smurgle was released, Unknown was my only holdback. So I was a bit disappointed that there was no unknowns at PAX, but thankfully I had a friend that I was staying with that traded me their unknown for one of the regionals I had. But you'll see more of that when I actually get around to editing the Pokemon Go footage I took from PAX East. Cause even though there wasn't an event tied with Pokemon Go at PAX East this year, I still had quite a bit of Pokemon Go experiences there, especially because that was a week that Lotad field research came out. I'll talk more about that when I get the podcast out relating to field research. While I'm plugging the other work I do and plan to do, if you're listening to this, there should be a podcast out in regards to field research already. Basically what I did is I divided my talks on field research into two parts. One that's related to Phoebus Day because it was the first. Overview of the details and why and the cri- criticism that it received. And when I release part two, I'm going to go over Clan Pearl Day, throw in Lat Till Day in there because that came out <laughs> in the midst of getting Phoebus Day released. Talk about how. The field research day has been approved, and what we can do to assure that it continues to be an enjoyable experience in the future, slash improve it. Looking forward to putting some time aside in between all the other side projects I do for the internet to go more on that. And is there anything else? Oh yeah, there is one thing I almost overlooked. And I can't help but sigh because I just got done telling people that around this household that I would not be out all weekend next weekend because there wasn't anything going on. I forgot Safari Zone over in Singapore started this weekend, which is fine in the sense that I won't, definitely won't be going to Singapore or anything, but I get the feeling I want to keep a weekend day open to go walking around because usually when they have a Safari Zone, they have a worldwide release of a shiny Pokemon. And... Usually, the odds of getting that shiny Pokemon are a bit better. Technically, we haven't had the shiny Pokemon revealed, but even the Go Ranger app that I'm referencing at the moment is saying that it's going to be shiny Shuckle. So I think we should brace ourselves for a shiny Shuckle. If it's anything like past community, I mean Safari Zone events, the weekend that this Safari Zone is going on, so like, the next Saturday or Sunday you're seeing this. There's going to be shuckles everywhere. And we're going to find have the chance to find a shiny shuckle. So I'll have to figure that out on my own time though. Hopefully I didn't bite myself and dig myself a hole out. Screwing myself out of this. Because I'll admit with how long I was out yesterday for... The Bagon Community Day. I really need to spend some time home next weekend. I can't like be out for five hours again. (laughs) If not with helping family around the house, then I definitely need the time at home to catch up on some of my other projects. Well, I'll figure something out though. 
Now, with all that out of the way, I think I covered all the current and upcoming events. And it's not quite an hour yet. So, is there anything you really want to talk about? While well, I scroll through the Pokemon to try to get an idea after saying miscellaneous things, I guess we talk about the fact that I'm trying to get more and more into PvP. Specifically, like the Self Roads League stuff. The biggest obstacle and the only reason I really haven't done more with it is because there's just not barely anything in my local area, and like no tournaments being set up or anything like that. Closest local tourney that's going on is about an hour drive away. And maybe it's just me, but that feels a little too long just to play some Pokemon Go. But I'm getting at the point that I really want to experiment with PvP. Don't want to just friend every single person online I see just to get set up into a tournament. So that might be what I have to do. I may actually cave and do it this time. It's better than just spending all that Stardust powering up Pokemon, teaching them moves. Not to actually use them for the entire month. I gotta at least use the Pokemon I... I've already built up a league for the Kingdom Cup, the current self world scene going on. So I gotta at least do something with that. I've been enjoying my time catching Giratinas. I did not take advantage of the Legendary Lunch Hour. It's great for the people that it works out for, but unfortunately I'm just not one of those people. I have the freedom to have my lunch break during that time period, but... I just don't have a long enough lunch to actually go somewhere that has enough gems to justify spending my lunch break not having lunch. I'll admit, I am a bit of a food fanatic, like, I will get moody if I don't eat. <laughs> but like I said, it's not too big of a deal, because I've got plenty of Garatinas just ready on my own time. I do have the system, or... Worst case scenario, if I just go over to the college that's a long way home from work, I can just find anywhere from 1 to 3 tier 5 raids to do, assuming I stay long enough. Which makes it real great to do on Friday nights where I don't have to worry about going to work the following day. I mean, just to humble brag, if only to remind myself, how lucky I am compared to most people in the Pokemon Go community. I have myself seven Garatinas currently. Granted, two of them I just raided for during the community day that we had just yesterday as I'm recording this. But that's still a lot of Garatinas to have. Best one I have so far is... Wait, is this a water boosted one? I can't tell if it's water boosted or not, but it's 2082 and it's got perfect attack. Oh yeah, that's definitely water boosted because I have I got a really trolly one. Yeah, I think it's this guy. The one that looks like you can battle the best of them, has best HP. Attack is great too, defense is great too. His stats are really strong. For those of you who don't speak instinct, that translates to a 14-14-14 IV Giratina. God. <laughs> Man, like, even if... Took one point from defense and put it on an attack, that would have been so amazing. But the Raid Knight's still young, and worst case scenario, that is the best Giratina I get. It's definitely one I can be happy with. And that water boosted one I can definitely be happy with. Oh, I have it sorted by recent, not by CP. That's why that perfect attack showed up. And yeah, that's more fitting. The best water boosted one I have is a 14, 10, 14, which is still pretty good. I just have gotten so used to... I've just gotten so picky with how many Pokemon I get. I pretty much develop high standards for myself when it comes to IV checking. Even though 
I do have to remind myself that IVs don't make that much of a difference in stats, at least when you're raiding. And in fact, depending on what league you're battling in, IVs could even screw you over. But I still want to get the best I can, because if you're going to invest the candy and start that's to power something up, don't you want to power up the best thing you have? And not waste it on something? And not just spend all that dust powering it up? Only to get something better down the line? Yeah, but we could get into a whole topic on the fear of investing into something only to find something better to invest to later on. And as part of trying to get into PvP for the upcoming Kingdom Cup, I have been exploring a Chimchar nest that popped up a week or so ago. It was exciting in and of itself to actually have a Chimchar nest pop up because any legend, any starter Pokemon is pretty much a guaranteed community day sometime down the line, assuming you didn't have one already. So I'll take the opportunity to stock up on candies for it. But then it's like exploring options for my Kingdom Cup team because I have this glorious Bastiodon. Lucky that turned lucky in a trade. And I got some advice that I really need a fighting type Pokemon to complement it. However, I don't have a real move that's low enough that would actually evolve and still be under the 1500 range. Don't get anyone to trade for to get said real low. Now exploring other options, I got recommended Blaziken. And that made me think of Inferni because they're the same type. I think Blaziken is better overall, but looking at them a bit more closely, I think Infernape might fit my needs better, and even if it doesn't, it's a bit more accessible to me thanks to that nest, and thanks to the fact that I held on to the very first Chimchar I got, and it's probably a lot closer to the CP range I want in comparison to some of the Torchics I've saved. In fact, I think a majority of the Torchics I have saved are for trade fodder. So they're high in level, which would mean a high CP when fully evolved. So if I do anything with that Kingdom Cup stuff, if I do anything with that Chimchar, I'll be sure to let you know the next time I just chat about Pokemon Go. But besides that, I think that's all I have to talk about. There are some other things that happened, like Bagon Community Day. But I think what I'm doing, going to do going forward is specifically save those types of topics for their own podcast. Like I want to do sort of like a review on each community day, at least until I get more caught up with my VODs or vlogs. Because in the past I've been just recording everything I do on the community day and editing it all together. But they're kind of, not only are now I'm only following behind on vlogs to the point where I still have stuff from 2017, I believe. They're kind of just feeling the same, especially just me catching a bunch of the feature Pokemon of the week, showing some shinies, maybe a legendary raid or two. I feel like I get more out, you guys get more out of the experience, I should say. If I just talk about it in a podcast format rather than just record it. Not to say that once I get caught back up I won't do vlogs again in the future. But I think this could be a good com- this could be good for all of us. Allows me to focus my video editing time on making more original stuff. While you guys actually get to hear what my experience is like and not just watch me catch 20 of the same Pokemon for half an hour at a time. But I always look forward to feedback on my online content, so if you prefer the way I do vlogs over on my YouTube channel, feel free to let me know. If you want to reach out to me, Twitter's probably the social media platform that I'm on the most, and that's over at Jacket Stuff. Though I pretty much have a Jacket K on the majority of sites out there. On YouTube, if you go to the URL and type youtube.com slash jacket K-O-N-G, 
that'll be an easy way to get to my YouTube channel. And not only do I archive the podcast on here, I do other Pokemon Gold content like I've talked about earlier. And I do a variety of gaming-based content. Currently working on a full commentated playthrough that I'm hoping I'll start releasing before the end of this month of my first impressions on a mobile game that I got and heard great things about. And man, I can tell you from what I record, it's pretty crazy. If you're more of a photo guy, I encourage you to check out my Instagram. Anytime I take AR shots in this game, I usually post at least a few of them over on that Instagram. And that is Jacket K. But instead of just being K, there's a, is the K as in K-A-Y. I'll try to remember to put links to all this in the show notes. But worst case scenario, I will include my website somewhere in the format you're watching this in. And if you go to the site, all my social media pages will be on there. And on top of that, I believe my site is the best way to keep up to date with the content I do online. If you don't have a Twitter account. And since my Twitter account is a bit more casual and I kind of meme on there every now and then. If you strictly want news and updates, bookmarking that website is your best bet. I'll be sure to include the link to that in the description of what you're listening slash watching to. Thank you all for tuning in and I hope you all look forward to the stuff I do in the future. I'm definitely so excited to actually do some of that stuff I talked about. That I went ahead and did this podcast just to talk about all of it. <laughs> Even though I just released a podcast. I just released that whole Feedback Community Day overview. Despite the fact that I, that means I'll be releasing two podcasts in one week. When I usually struggle to do one podcast in a single month. <laughs> That's the life of an internet personnel. Especially when it's your hobby and not your job. Take care. Take care.